Hey everybody, I've got another parent interview for you to watch. Um, this one we're going to focus on uh, parent education. And so again, I have asked uh, an actual real life parent to come and share um, her perspectives and experiences. And then, um, and then you'll be asked to connect that to some, to some coursework. So um, this is Michelle Whitebrock. Welcome, Michelle. Michelle has uh, two boys. Jack and Teddy. I should have asked if you wanted me to share their names. Sorry, now it's out there. Um, and uh, and Teddy was in my preschool class the last two years. Oh yes, because mm -hmm. I've, I've been there two years. Um, so uh, so anyway, that's that's how I know Michelle and why I've asked her to come on and um, and give her perspective to you. So thank you, Michelle. Yes, happy yeah. to be here. Yeah. Um, so what what do you think it's important for um, some of the teach some of the people in the class are already in the classroom working with children, mm -hmm. some haven't yet. So just so you kind of know the, sure. the audience that we've got. But what what's important for them to know about your experience and your perspective um, with parent education? Um, I think it's fair to say like you should assume parents know nothing, right? I mean, <laughs> Because sure, we give birth to them and there's a whole bunch of books you can read. But, you know, if you're like me, once they like start moving, they just don't stop moving. So I just, <laughs> I never slept. You know, I barely ate myself. Uh, I don't have time to read parent books, you know, uh -huh. like what to know or what they should be doing or what you should be milestones or, you know, things yeah. like that. So um, it was really like a trial and error with the first kid, you know, you just don't, you don't know. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, so the more information that we get from you guys, the better, you know, and that was sort of the night and difference day with kid one and kid two. They both went to different preschools. Uh -huh. um, and with your program specifically, I mean, I learned more in those two years and I knew in the five years before that with the other kid, you know, it yeah. was just, yeah. So you know nothing. <laughs> okay. So there's two things I want to get back to, but I'm, we're going to come back to the assume we know nothing, but just, so I'm not asking you to like compliment me, but I'm curious about, you say you learned a lot in those two years. Um, what, what was effective? Sure. Um, so the notebooks that we got um, back and forth, uh -huh. um, where I should have been writing more things back, but I didn't really. Nobody but did. Whenever he was bringing, you know, and there was the a sheet attached too that really showed like what you did, and um, also the conversations when we would pick him up. So mm -hmm. with the um, students that were helping, um, who would just be like, "We worked on this," or "He's doing this a lot better." Um, different things that. Um, Otherwise, we would have had no idea. Yeah. Okay. So to go back to the assume we know nothing, um, that's that's something that I want to just pop something into the conversation here for the students. But um, it's a it's a weird um, uh, sort of I'm going to say dichotomy, but that's not really the word I'm looking for. But maybe a better word will come as I talk. Um, but but so many child care providers, early childhood educators that I've worked with get so annoyed when parents don't know what we think they should know and we lose patience with them. And um, so, so to me, it's like, well, how can you say that you're an expert and a professional um, and then be annoyed that someone who is not in that profession doesn't know your professional not like doesn't have the same expertise as you. Right. So like so I'm also we, not a surgeon, so don't expect me to know brain surgery. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And I think part of it comes from just this sort of general assumption in our culture and other cultures that women naturally know what to do with children. Mm -hmm. And um and and honestly women are the the moms are the ones we interact with most often. Sure. Um, and we don't have the same expectations of dads. Like a dad could come in and just goof around with us and we'd be like, oh, he's such a good involved dad. But then, um, you know, mom comes in and doesn't understand something and we're like, God. Yeah. So, um, so I'm glad that you, that you mentioned that, um, uh, <laughs> that, that you really are, you know, parents really are out there um, welcoming information. And then yeah. it's up to us to figure out how to effectively share that 
with you. Yeah, and too, like, you know, I think some people, it depends on, too, like, how you grew up. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't have any younger siblings, so I never really got into, like, the whole taking care of young children experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, We weren't around babies a lot. Um, I was also raised by my dad, so it was very much like a black and white no feelings. Let's just, you know, charge through life, you know, I don't know. And so we really, I never really got any sort of that maternal. Yeah. Ness. Just modeling, just just that experience of modeling and practicing. Um, And, and you mentioned parenting books too. And a lot of times the information from parenting books is more uh, sort of popular psychology Mm -hmm. and um, not based on child development, which is where our strength is as a field. That's what we understand. Um, So, so even just saying, well, they should read parenting books isn't always very helpful. (laughs) Right. Right. Um, So, so that's, those are all, those are good things. So um, have you had any, uh, any sort of negative or uncomfortable interactions around your child's teachers trying to offer you some education or? Um, not really. Okay, you know, good. the more the more I look back on kid number one, um, it's almost like a void of it, you know, and it was more of like, look what we're making them try to do, you know, they were trying to make him write, you know, at a very early stage, and then they got he got reprimanded for not writing. For not writing. <laughs> And it just like set this path in his life for him to believe yeah. that he was not good at writing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it turned out we're doing a, a lot of evaluations now and um, he's probably on a spectrum for oh, autism. Okay, okay. Um, and like, here we are like four years later. Like why, you know, it was, there was no, there was no necessary uh-huh. step or um, developmental talk for kid number one. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, so, but, and night and day difference for kid number two. Yeah. Um, so wait, that reminded me of something and now I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, so give me a minute. Oh, okay, so the other, the other thing that is kind of a, uh, for early childhood folks, when we think parent education, sometimes we think things to send home and, and these students are gonna have to develop um, uh, one of their assignments is going to be develop to develop a, like a packet of activities that we could send home. Um, but so, so what I would like you to speak to is what would you hope or want teachers to know about your evenings with your family if they're sending things home with an expectation that you're going to then do them with your children? Mm. Uh, 15 minutes max. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you know, it's just once the school year is in, in flow, you know, by the time they get home and have a snack, it's four o'clock, the parents are cooking dinner, Uh then it's five o'clock, then you're thinking about bath time or, you know, cleaning up the tornado of your house that you have, (laughs) um, or whatever, you know, finding clothes for them to wear. And, um, it's, it's not like the Brady Bunch where you're sitting down at dinner and you have your nanny cooking your food <laughs> for you. And, um, so something right. quick and easy that really pushes what you want them to learn. So um, the most bang for your buck in an yeah. activity. Yeah, that's good advice. I, I was honestly the worst um, do this at home mom. Oh yeah. I worked in the field and knew what they were trying to do. Cause I just did, that's not how I wanted to spend my evenings. You know, I worked all day and I wasn't with my kids until like five or six. And, um, which is also why I didn't have a regular bedtime, which they also hated about (laughs) working with me as a parent. We just started. I mean, you know, it's been a while, but. Yeah. Um, but, uh, But that 15 minutes and make it meaningful, I think is really, really good advice. So to me, that sounds like, um, you know, maybe it's not the same activity pack for every family. Maybe it has to be really based on that individual child and what you think they want practice with or are interested in. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so that's another challenge on our side of things to make it 
individualized and, and yeah like think about that family and what you know about right. that family and it, and really you hit you were right too on base it on the kid because you know jack would protest <laughs> profusely for to do anything school related when it's not school you know uh, -huh. uh but teddy would do it all day long if you <laughs> sat there and did a project with him or whatever it was so yeah um, especially if it was about dinosaurs dinosaurs or pirates like <laughs> that's true they did a lot of pirate things with him didn't they because they yep. knew that was his interest so they could work his his um his yeah life. or if it was star wars for jack that could have worked but um yeah they weren't that creative in his yeah. <laughs> Um, so let me think, is there anything, um, I'm, I'm thinking about if I have more questions, but is there anything that you intended to talk about that we haven't gotten to yet? Um, not really just, um, you know, give us some grace, you know, as parents, yeah. you know, when we forget the snacks and whatever dress up day or whatever we're yeah. supposed to be doing. And, um, yeah, you know. yeah. Hard to be partners with someone when you're constantly feeding a negative conversation cycle with your coworkers or in the break room, or um, yeah. then it's hard to really drop that and, and get to know you as a human being. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we, you know, I had that a really good time with um, that one fall with Teddy's two um, clinicians. <laughs> yeah. And they were, I mean, they were fantastic. I felt yeah. like, we did really connect and he learned a lot uh -huh. that fall. Yeah. So I think that just helped everybody. Yeah. There is a lot of, there's research and it gets talked about a lot in, um, in early childhood about the connection between academic success and parent engagement. And I think too often it gets, um, it gets sort of interpreted and delivered as, well, if you do these things we tell you to do and you're engaged in that way, then your child will do better. Instead of just realizing that when relationships are stronger, learning, it's safer to learn and, it, right. and learning happens uh, more regular or more easily. Um, so I just have to throw that out there too. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm ending all these interviews with, with a question and I forgot to remind you about this before we started talking, but I am also just asking everyone to share, um, just to give the students practice with taking individual parent considerations, uh, or parent requests and things into consideration. But if there was one thing that you thought it was really important for someone who was working with either of the boys to know about them or something that you really wanted for them when they're with someone else? What, what um, sure. I think for, for Jack, kid number one, um, <laughs> he, he struggled with separation, you know, and I think that was age appropriate, but yeah. it was, um, it was on a different level for him. Um, and we see it now, like it's yeah. still, um, very much part of his anxiety and things that we're noticing in his behaviors. And so um, I think for him, it would have just been like a little bit more awareness sure. of it, you know, and him struggling to just participate was him just overly Being having anxious. that anxiety. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, That's a good one. Well for done. Teddy, for Teddy, <laughs> um, he's just like the sweetest. You know? I know. <laughs> Like if I could express how sweet he is, I don't know how to do it. But, um, and so for him, it was just like a feeling of wanting to keep protect that little sweetness of mm -hmm. him because yeah. here he is coming out and like wanting to be friends with everybody and he will share anything with you and he wants to give you what you like just to make you happy, you know, yeah. I mean, just, so it would have been to just like protect that little heart. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's true. He is the sweetest. <laughs> it's funny, you know. It's oh funny, my God. yes, yeah. So, <laughs> so okay, I agree with the things you shared. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Um, all right, well, this this was a great conversation, Michelle. Thanks so much. Um, and I think that it's going to give us in the class a lot of opportunity for discussion and reflection, which is um, which is going to make them better teachers. Great. So thanks so much for, for yeah. spending time and being willing to share your perspective with us all. Of course. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody.